Yo, Artie, can I holler at you for a minute? Pop tripping. He want me to ask you for the money for that shirt. You know I wouldn't even trip. What shirt? The one I sold you. The one I've been asking you about. The one you got on. Oh, this shirt. I ain't know you wanted the money, homie. I thought it was free. Let me go get the money for you. I mean, it, cause it's this blog. Me and my dad do Urban X and West. It's kind of like both of ours. You know, I'm just. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Cool. Cool. Urban Hi, welcome back to Urban X TV. Uh, via Zoom, we have the Black Dot in the building. What's up? Yes, sir. What's good, King? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. You know, enjoy my weekend. That's good. That's good. Everything is great. How about you? Amazing, amazing time uh, musically. I think um, this album that we're about to talk about deserves a few minutes of my time because people have been asking. Okay. So because we're not scheduled to hook up until Monday, tomorrow, and do our regular thing, we wanted to put something out there now. So I don't have to answer this, these questions on, on, on Monday. Right. So uh, the album we're talking about is Busta Rhymes' uh, new album, Extinction Level Event 2, that dropped on Friday. Um, this album is very highly anticipated. We were talking about it uh, in a few shows leading up to his release because we, we, we heard, like, he had a lot of, he, it was going to be one of, those, one of those albums. And yeah. I don't think he disappointed. Mm. Uh, Neither do I. Neither do yeah. I. Myself, um, I heard it, and me, just um, I'm 27, so I, I grew up, and I've heard, I kind of heard music change as well. So listening to this album, I kind of heard uh, uh, a, a vintage sound, like it was a lot of just production, a lot of rapping, um, the interludes, the the audio from uh, Minister Farrakhan, all these people put on one project. It was like a very, very vintage album, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I thought it was well-crafted. So I want to start by saying um, a classic is in the ear of the beholder. Mm -hmm. You know how we say beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Well, a classic album is in the ear of the beholders. Be able to get fragments of what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because Buster's history uh are, are we stable yeah i'm good I'm good okay buster's history uh dates back so far and him beginning this story of extinction level event is at least 22 years old so when we speak about classics everyone has their own criteria on what they really feel a classic album is i'm not here to debate or dispute anybody's view of what a classic is I'm just gonna give you my criteria and my criteria changes based on the artist. And right. I know it's not fair. When I review an album, I don't review an album to compare it against somebody else's work. Like I would never put Drake's album up against really a Kendrick Lamar album. Hmm. I'm expecting different things from Kendrick Lamar than I am from Drake. So if I review Drake's album, I'm reviewing it based on the lane that I feel he's in. Now, some things may cross over, obviously, right. but the lyrical genius that Kendrick Lamar is and what the conceptual albums he bring about are much different. And I don't think it would be fair to Drake for me to do that or fair to Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. if I'm looking at how many hits is on a Drake album. Right. And I say that because, you know, we have this one broad brush of what a classic is, and it could be different. When you mentioned the word vintage, 
And I said, damn, well, vintage is classic. Right. So um, when we get into this, I called this album a classic the first time I heard it. And it wasn't off a of hype because, you know, I don't do that. I call uh, 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 Jay Electronica's new album a goddamn Frisbee. <laughs> and people got mad. But in my humble opinion, the uh, written testimony was a goddamn Frisbee. Mm -hmm. I can tell him and Jay-Z just kind of put that together and Jay-Z dominated it in certain aspects. <clears throat> However, the one that he was supposed to release, that was a classic to me, or at least, if not a classic, I appreciated its ingenuity, its creativity, and it was really a piece of art. Right. I really appreciated it. So I say all of that to say, so I'm not easily swayed by hype. Timing of an album can make it a classic. Right. When it comes out, what it's up against in terms of uh, the social, economic, political environment that we're in, the spiritual fight that we're in, um, not trying to go with the flow or sound like everybody else, that's important. And of course, it has to, have, it has to sonically be tight, conceptually be in order, lyrically be superb. And I felt that this album delivered all of those things. That's 22 songs. You probably could have cut it down to 15 or 16, to be honest. However, the extra songs were not just throw-in songs. They were all tight songs. Mm -hmm. So when you measure it in 22, maybe the number he used since it's been 22 years since he delivered Extinction Level Event 1. Right. So... You know, no telling how deep, because it took 11 years to deliver this album. <clears throat> Another thing, any artist that can take off 11 years, 11 years in music is like 40 years in real life in terms of how many styles change. Very few artists can take 11 years off and return and not return to the point where it's just a novelty thing. Oh, he returned. No, return with a vengeance. Return to reclaim their throne. Return to deliver uh, a, a tangible piece of work. Right. It's not very easy to do. Nas can do it. Maybe Jay-Z. A few other people. Other than that, they, they usually sound <clears throat> like they're trying to relive their past or they haven't adjusted and adapted enough just to the environment. I'm not saying you have to become a mumble rapper or, but you have to be able to have some kind of uh, awareness of the time that we are in. Well, what I noticed, one of the first things I noticed was that even though he took that long of a time off, he didn't sound like he was trying to sound like 2020. Like it was inherently busted, his style, his cadence, his, how he likes his how he likes his music, how he likes his production, but it was just in 2020. And that's what I think all artists should kind of um do. You know what I mean? When they when they put out their music, just stick and, to and, and that's the point I'm trying to make. A lot of times we 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 think we want to deliver something that sounds of the date, but where was your energy source? Right. And remember, his audience has grown with him. Right. We grow with our artists. But we get disappointed when our artists are trying to sound like it was 1986. Right. You know what I mean? And you no, know, we don't want you to sound like 1986 or true artists don't. We want you to have a resemblance of where you come from, but make your music relevant till today. Hmm. So Extinction Level Event 2, The Wrath of God, is relevant because of what we are going through in this country. Hmm. The skeleton with the mask on the cover is brilliant, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it's speaking directly to these times that we are in and the album opens up, you know what I mean? Uh, delivering and, and pur when the purge comes on, which is the second song, he should have extended that. But the purge set the mood for, okay, this is the climate that we're in. <clears throat> what he didn't do was preach through 22 songs right. about the times we're in because that's a turn off. As well, he did what Buster does, and Buster has no style. Every style is Buster's style, which makes it very relevant that he breathed life, and he's so animated and so unpredictable in his flow that 
every song he breathed life into it and i felt like he he, he commanded the scene on every song we we'll speak in particular about certain songs and, and where i think you know this piece went and he ended it with delivering messages warning us once again about some things that are coming down the pipe some things that we need to be aware of and he did not disappoint now the producers knots ninth wonder uh 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 rottweiler uh q-tip swiss beats the list goes on and on and for you to put an album together that cohesive <clears throat> uh premiere he's got a joint with premiere him and premiere finally hooked up and it sounds vintage so to take that many producers and put them on a project and still make the project sound as cohesive as it does well it took a long time so i, I would i would hope you know what I mean yeah, but listen still when you add that many different energies sometimes you get a project that sounds like it's all over the place True. buster carefully thought this out um busters from the era that golden era Buster has been at the top and Buster has come down, you know, mm -hmm. and, and gone through all kind of personal ups and downs. The loss of Chris Lighty uh, really affected him and his dad. And we all go through depression in different states. And I think he articulated it really great on a song called Deep Thoughts. When he spoke about Chris Lighty, spoke about his dad, spoke about what he was commissioned to do after he got back on his feet. He spoke and he said something real smooth that murder has no statutory limit. Mm. When he was referring to Chris Lighty, and he said, you know who I'm talking to. Mm. So that led me to believe that he doesn't believe Chris Lighty committed suicide. And then when I reflect, cause I knew Chris Lighty went to high school with Chris Lighty. And when I reflect on his untimely death and then i looked at the funeral photos everybody was there with security guards which was very weird that you come to somebody's funeral and everybody's got security guards with them as if they were uneasy about something so we know that the industry has its ability to keep its own secrets right but the way he was speaking as if he's not going to rest and to whoever has done this is brought to some kind of justice in this particular song deep thoughts he's talking about not being busted he's talking about being home with his queen when he can relax who he can be whoever he wants to be who understands the struggles that he's going through uh even after two shows in a row and he sounds froggy like i sound now when he's lost his voice and he can share his pain his struggles with the one woman who he trusts. I thought this song was very powerful. Um, I'm gonna be skipping around when we start talking about the songs. <clears throat> I thought the song with Old oh Dirty Bastard was classic. It, it sounded like Old oh Dirty Bastard was in the studio. So wherever he got these vocals from, go ahead. Yeah, a lot of the, because um, when I was listening to it, a lot of the, the verses of some of the people, I'm like, oh snap. They were either samples or like he had to, he was sitting on the verses for a while. Right. And you can tell, but it doesn't take away from the song either. Right. Absolutely. His respect for ODB, uh, you know, growing up and who he was and what he meant to, to Buster. So that meant a lot. He had Jay Dilla. You mm -hmm. had some, some, some flavor from Jay Dilla. Um, the song Czar, uh, which really pops off the album. Yeah. Uh, with MOP yeah. on it, is it, it, it has that energy of Annie Up. And, you know, it has that let's go get them energy, uh, the, these drums, which sounds like they're war drums. And Buster is classically riding over this track and the dope video to go along with that, that only Buster can do. Remember, Buster pioneered videos to the extent, from a hip hop standpoint, which allowed you to use your imagination. I consider Buster the jester of hip hop, but remember the jester 
a, a, a wise man could play the role of a fool, but a fool could never play the role of a wise man. So Buster having knowledge of self, when we look at the beginning of Buster, ah, ooh, ah, and his hairstyle, and you know, he gave off such energy, but he had knowledge of self, which tells me that out of the chaos was always order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Buster is chaos and order. And order came in officially when he did put your hands where my eyes can see. Okay. If you really want to party with me, because that was the first time he wasn't yelling on no song. Oh, okay. In God We Trust. You know what I'm saying? He was just flowing. You know what I'm saying? And we had, it, it was so diametric to what he used to do. Most people didn't know it was Busta. Mm -hmm. And if memory serves me correct, that was the last song on the album that they recorded on that specific album. And it was huge because it moved him from chaos to order, and now he had, in my humble opinion, a specific mission, you know, with Anarchy and all the albums that came uh, leading up to an extension uh, level event. Um, Buster, I, I, I remember Buster opening up for us when I was with Tim Dog. I have the footage, I just gotta find it. And the ironic thing was, he was that way back then. So this wasn't an act, we right. was backstage, and he was what leader to the new school and me and Tim, we had a show out in Jersey somewhere in some high school or something. And Buster was Buster then. So it lends to let me know that this is an authentic behavior or, you know, by Buster. Yeah. So the album moves along greatly. You know what I mean? Uh, sonically cohesive. I'm, I'm just going to bring up some of the, uh, so I don't forget some of the, songs that I wanted to mention. Out of my mind. Well, Bill Bev DeVoe. Bill, well, it's Bill like Bell. a real throwback song yeah. and show you how only Buster could remix something of that magnitude. I believe the song I'm talking about, oh, Strap Yourself Down. Well, he's going, what the, what the? Oh, yeah. and, and this, this is, don't come behind that. Yeah. The way he laid this out, was just masterful. The track, the music, uh, everything about it. Go ahead. One thing about this album, what I know, because he kept referencing like the name of the album, and that told me like this was supposed to be an album. You get what I'm saying? Like it wasn't just songs he's just putting together. He's just making sure he gets features from this person, features from this person, put on an album so it could stream up. This was supposed to be an album, like a, a complete project. Right, absolutely. And the timing of it, remember, he dropped. ELF won in 98, and on the album cover, it was between the Manhattan and Brooklyn Bridge, and all of that was on fire mm. in reference to 9-11. Now, I'm not saying that he predicted that, but he was trying to use his music now as a way to put the medicine in the food, mm. which is what we try always try to do, and give you Buster so you don't lose the essence of who he is, but he, when you have knowledge of self, you have a duty to teach what you know to those who do not know. So in these projects, he always did that. The 11 years off uh, uh, lends to that we are about or in the midst of another crisis. Mm -hmm. So I don't need an album really just talking about drug dealing. And that's no disrespect to Benny the Butcher and that movement because of what they do. Um, but I, I, I needed an album that at least at my age, 52, mm -hmm. that speaks to what's going on, something I can reference to, something that when it hits my soul, it immediately acclimates to the environment that I'm in. Artists in the 90s did that all the time. Even with Get Rich or Die Trying, dude, when that album dropped, that was the mentality of the people. We all felt like, let's push all our chips to the middle of the table. So albums come out in a timely fashion <clears throat> and they resonate, you know what I mean? Not just about rhymes and, and bars, it has to resonate. I spoke about how Benny the Butcher in conjunction with Ben uh, 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 Biden who wrote the, 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 uh, the crime bill, mm -hmm. his music went back to that time of Bill Clinton. Right. And, you know, that era, so it was synonymous 
And here we are again, Buster dropped ELF1 in 98, right. which is, you know, around that time when Jay-Z was dropping Reasonable Doubt and, you know, all of these things were, were, were taking place. So we're in a nostalgic time. Right. You know what I mean? So, but because Buster's from the era where he wanted to put out album that was more of a story that you can rock from one end to the next, I'm not surprised that he delivered this album the way he did. Right. I don't know if that makes any sense. I understand. I understand. So, so what, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. I, I was gonna ask, uh, what's another another track that uh, kind of spoke to you? Um, slow flow, of course, with Old Dirty Bastard. I spoke about. Um, he had Farrakhan on this album, which is always great because we did that. Public Enemy would do that. Uh, you know, we we would do that during those times as a way to segue a new generation into some of the uh, prophets or those who we look up to, to drop messages. I thought his song with um, uh, uh, Rick Ross was clever. Mm -hmm. A lot of people gave him flack because he used the name Master Farad Muhammad, but it was a timely song where Rick Ross got off the drug dealing shit and was speaking about the contributions of Master Farad Muhammad. Right. We have to blend the then and the now. And so I thought that their uh, connection on that was crazy. I had no problems with that. Um, this whole album, man, uh, a song called Boop, number nine. Cheesh. Just watching him flow. Yeah. yeah. I, like the one, I like the one with Q-Tip. He got off yeah. of it. Oh, don't go with him and Q-Tip. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And it brought me back to the leaders of the new school. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of that era. I thought him connecting with um, Anderson Pack on 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 you was again him not being stuck in his time. Him recognizing the shining light right. of somebody uh, as talented as Anderson Pack. Yeah. Um. Of course, he went into a uh, oh best I can for me. Number fifteen. Oh, yes. Capacity. Right, yeah. Now, for all fathers who have tried their best to be the best dad they can be and still ran into uh, all of these loopholes because, you know, your significant other may have been holding agendas or hurt because of the way it went down, doesn't matter. Rhapsody's vo vocals, because they could have easily went the, the easy route mm -hmm. when she's on one side calling him I ain't shit nigga, mm -hmm. this, that, and him calling her. The, the minute the song came on, when I saw where it was heading, I said, this is a song about accountability. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And I felt her bars, they spoke to my soul. Yeah. As a dad who's been through situations, it spoke to my soul. And his response to it spoke to my soul because as a great dad, I'm not talking about the deadbeat dads, forget them. Mm -hmm. The ones who don't. It's the ones who want to do these things and they still have all these loopholes to climb. I thought it was a magical song that you have to be, you'd have to experience that to understand it. If you're just listening to it, it sounds cool. When you have put up money, sweat, tears to go through something and then to have your other significant other realize it too, because that's what growth is. Mm -hmm. And growth is us coming together years later and say, yeah, I could have did that better. Or her saying, yeah, I was wrong. I could have did that better. That's called growth. And not, not a lot of young people get to a chance to experience growth right. because they're still going through the hurt and pain. This was a grown man song. You know what I'm saying? And I advise all dads and moms who understand the significance of it to really vibe with the song that was produced by Knife Wonder. That had me in tears. Um, the song with Mariah Carey, you can tell it's nostalgic. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it goes back to when him and Mariah teamed up for the Flip Mode song. Uh, so that rock, I told you, Deep Thought was the one, him sitting in between his, his queen's legs, just reflecting. He could be home. He, he don't have to be Buster. He could be Trevor. Uh, and of course, look over my shoulder uh, with, um, with Kendrick. It's crazy. Considering how old Kendrick's bars are. Yeah. To show you how futuristic he is, these bars are probably 10 years old. Yeah. Maybe even longer. <clears throat> when you can write bars that are timeless, yeah. mm -hmm. not too many MCs can do it. 
right? These bars are timeless. I didn't, it didn't sound dated at all. Right. Right. And for him and Buster to team up and use these Michael Jackson samples that he had got his hands on, the Crazy. actual real to reels. Yeah. He was able to get his, he, he said he got pieces of them goofing off in the studio because back then you had to keep tape, you just had to keep the tape running. It wasn't no punch in and punch out with Pro Tools. So he was able to capture this full essence on this song and it really, really knocks. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? Then he's got the joint with him and Mary, that knocks. But again, it speaks to an era because they did that about five or six years ago. Uh, you know, Mary, she, she, really, she really took this track over. So I thought it was dope. And then he went into um, a song called Freedom with Nicky Greer, where he started laying down the day and times that we now live in. Right. And he ended it with a song called Satanic, <clears throat> in which he said, if the world is coming to an end, I'm going to give it up. And he spoke about all the rituals he see in the music industry. He just spoke blatantly about it, that you niggas have sold your soul and there's going to be a price to pay is a very damning message to leave the people off on. To right. say, I see you. I know what's going on. Here it is. So I'm going to say bravo to Busta Rhymes sonically, lyrically, conceptually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And timely, right? This came out. We don't even know what the next couple of weeks the, the election is in two days. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what kind of extinction level event we will be experiencing. So the timing of this, and I thought everything else, made this a classic in my mind, right? Again, classic is in the ear of the beholder. I'm not here to argue with you because we can nitpick and that's the problem. We don't listen to music anymore to enjoy it. We yeah. listen to music to critique it, to compare it to this and that. No bueno. Yeah, but having like now having an opinion is giving people platforms. So the, the faster you come out with an opinion, especially about music, especially yes. about somebody as notable as Buster, that gives people higher platforms. And and, and, and it gets an, an argument on exchange going of things. I love music. Right. I love artistry. And I love it all from the hustling to, you know, but Buster knows he has a responsibility, right? Benny the Butcher, he's not a young artist, but he's a new artist. I don't hold him to the same level of accountability that I would a Buster Rhymes, mm -hmm. who understands what his words mean, right. who understand that these images are going all over the place. I'm expecting Benny the Butcher, who I love, I love the whole Griselda family, to grow, right? So when I speak about his music now, I could be a little critical of it, but from album to album, I don't want to hear five albums in, you're still in the streets. Right, right. You know you're not, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, dope. Um, I wanted to get you, because I saw your post on Facebook immediately, you called it a classic, so I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, I worked out to it a few days ago, so I definitely appreciate it, and it's still going, it's still going to, you yeah, know. I've listened to it five times already. Yeah. So, uh, and my opinion hasn't changed. It, it's, it's only grown because, like I said, we spend too much time looking for what's wrong right. and not just appreciating what it took to put an album of this magnitude together. How many songs didn't make it? Mm -hmm. You know, Buster sitting around reflecting on, because they said Buster got an amazing ear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And how he wants things to go. So it, it, it all told an amazing story of who Buster is, who he respects, what his beliefs are, and going forward, what is his responsibility as an elder of the culture now to make sure that if this is his last project, that he has delivered something that can stand the test of time, something that can inspire, something that can ignite, something that can awaken. And he did that. I agree. And bravo to Buster Rhymes I agree. Uh, for doing it. He's always been one of them artists who I've always respected, especially from his stage show. Like, 
You don't want no parts of that. You want to get in and get out before he hits the stage. Um, so shout out to him. Great production, great concept, and a time that I felt that we needed it. Yes. All right, man. So where can you be reached? Uh, go to uh, YouTube, Urban X TV. That's what we do, man. I mean, you know, hit me at the black dot on, on, on the grand or the black dot one or something. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So with that being said, peace. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to the Urban X Podcast. We will see you guys tomorrow. Yep. Peace. Peace.